Good. But we are on camera now. Yes, we are. Alright. And if any part, please feel free to fire up anything you got. Um, so we can go ahead and get this thing started here. Uh, you got Matthew, my Real Life TV 505 here. Welcome back, everybody, with a very special episode for you. And alongside me today, we got my PIC, Natasha. We have a special guest over here, Angela. And we have our other special guest over here, Stu, which y'all know from info.thc. And we kick it a lot. <laughs> All right. So today, like I said, we have a special, special thing to talk about. And it's breaking the stigmas of medical cannabis and parenting, man. I know it's something that's affected all of us, which is why we invited all of us here to talk about this today. Um, I'm going to kind of start just kind of by introducing everybody a little bit. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start with the ladies and kind of go from there. So um, go ahead and talk to a little bit about like your experience, how many, kids, how many kids you got, how long you've been medicating, how it, it's helped you, okay. things like that. Well, okay, Natasha, I've been medicating... Uh, about 15 years of my life and broke a lot of stigmas with parenting and cannabis. Um, fought a lot for myself in knowing that this medication was right for me because through your life you go through things, ups and downs. I lost my, my dad five years ago. That put me in a funk of just anxiety and depression and still trying to be a parent um they put me on some meds that i didn't like and i kept telling them i, I can't function um i i like cannabis is there a way i can get help this way um through my insurance they said no unfortunately and so i got myself off of the pharmaceuticals and i found at the time uh, peace, I think it's called Peace, and they were helping me get my card um, so that I could have coverage in being a mom and being a cannabis patient. I have four boys um, from the ages of 6 to 15. Um, I haven't hid the fact that I am on the medication, um, but they know that I do it for reasons like that we talk about. So um, I just try to keep them educated and let them know what's going on with me a little bit. Not too much with the younger ones. Um, I know it's a lot like at once, but it, it all happened over time. Like just try and arrow medications and how they made me feel and how I felt smoking weed. I felt more functioning, uh, able to still go on with my day. And you've been able to do, you've been doing kind of since you've been, since you've been, oh, well, before a mother. Time. Before yeah. I was a mother. The thing we even really knew this as medicine. Right. Yeah. And it was self medicine. Like I went through personal stuff as a as a kid too. Like teenagers go through a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to like be a friend with everybody. You know, you know, self like finding your self place. judgment. Yeah. yeah. Everything. It kind of helped me get out of that. Um, I focused a lot on art and painting and hair and cooking. That I think this helped me be creative in that way instead yeah. of being like, oh, you're ADD or you're depressed, let's put you on these pills and And it's kinda of like the same thing for our kids nowadays too. It's kind of going for that same thing. You gotta remember where we were when we were kids when we first kinda of started medicating and then we didn't really realize why we just you know we were having a good time but then at the same time we realized it's chilling us out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I still focused. I was still active. I played softball till I was eighteen. I did cheer, I did uh, football, I did like, a lot of different things. And you're and still, and, but now you, you got your four boys. You're, yeah. you're, you have to. You work basically from home because your your schedule revolves around your children. Yeah, I, I, At the same time, you're medicating to try to keep balance. Yes. So it, it's, <clears throat> and then you have to go to places where sometimes you might smell like your medication, uh -huh. and yes. you're gonna catch a judgment. Right. That, that did happen within the schools, and um, going with, going through stuff with the kids who are having some issues in school. Yes, having to show up to a meeting and smelling like my key. Yeah. And so, yeah, having my card and even talking to them a little bit and being like, you know, I medicate, I'm a cannabis patient. That's might be why you smell me. But they are already used to it. I mean, we can talk and function and come up with a solution for the kids. Mm -hmm. and just be able to just be able to yeah, work it out and just, put, so just realize that it's medicating. Mm -hmm. And Angela, you actually, you have a couple of children as well, right? I have four children, yeah. 
So future. Yes, okay, I nice. have three adult children <laughs> okay. and I have a small child. So it's it's changed for me over the years. Of when with my older children, mm -hmm. I would say I definitely hit it back then. It was when my children. The yeah, right? definitely. I have. Let's see. Oh my gosh, how old Lawrence is getting ready to turn twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. Jonathan is going to be twenty-five. Maria is going to turn twenty, and then Amor is six. Nice. So, so good. 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 How does medicating and taking care of your special needs child work out for you? Because I know, like, when I've gone to court, I've had a lot of issues with the court timing because of my condition, my, my disease, that I choose to use cannabis, that they don't know if I'm mentally able to take care of my child. And it's like, <coughs> I can take care of my child. I'm, I'm better. actually better able to take care of my child yeah. medicating. As opposed to not medicating or being on I, something else, The right? pharmaceuticals made me too zone out. I wouldn't be able to focus. What did you try? Um, it had me on Lexapro, it had me on, I can't even think of the other, that's been so long that I that you dropped all of them. That's good, yeah, that's good. Because I've always preferred the cannabis. I've, I've been self-medicated with cannabis for 33 years. Yeah. And it started yeah. out as a teenager trying out all the hour, time, like, want to yeah. go and see what the friends do, see what this smoking and joint is all about. And I realized I have relaxed, had fun. Yeah. Got the munchies when <laughs> got snacks and like, hey, this was a good time. Kindly. Yeah. Was then, kind of felt better about the stress yeah. that you didn't even realize. Didn't feel nervous about meeting new people. Yeah. Didn't worry about whether they were going to accept me or not. Just kind of, it was just myself. I can just kind be, of like the way you felt. Be normal, yeah. Bit, I was like, right? okay, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. medicate and get in the zone. You just go and just talk. Yeah. So then I realized after a while that Oh, well, it's, it's, I'm sure Natasha can relate to during that time of the month for females. Mm -hmm. It really helps with your cramps. It mm -hmm. helps you to deal with the stress that you get nausea. along with it, the nausea, everything, all your symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then after a while, I realized that, well, all this time I had actually been using for medicinal purposes as well. Yeah. And of course, I do it for good times with friends, but definitely <coughs> the times that I did just for that reason. Exactly. Went through stuff as a teenager and definitely needed to kind of have, some, have something to help me deal with anxiety. Went through hard times, had to deal with depression, and mm -hmm. it was a way of dealing with it. And it's better than doing drinking and alcohol or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yes. And definitely went through that as a teenager too, and you know, it's all. And yeah, so how, how, how's it going for you, like, <laughs> how's it going for you with your younger child and smelling like medication when you go she, crazy? Is he, does she aware of it? And... She, um, is, was actually my motivation to get my medical card. Oh, really? Um, okay. I thought with the child with special needs, it's going to be even harder to fight the system if it ever came into play where mm. they tried to bring up me smoking cannabis. And I thought, you know, they need to know this is my medication. I'm not yeah, uh, here just partying. It. I'm not just being a dysfunctional parent. I'm, to get I'm trying to this medicate in a way that I can actually function and take care of my child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Right. So I know like with Stu, so Stu, he, he helps people get, get their cards and stuff yeah. like that too. So. Yeah, so. Um, but you also have couple of children yourself, mm -hmm. right? Two, yeah. Is it two boys? Three boys. Three boys. Three boys. Okay, yeah. I met two. Yeah. Yeah, okay, exactly. nice. So Stu also has three boys, and you've been medicating the cannabis. 20-something years, mm -hmm. you know? So, my, like, I didn't start in high school like a lot of people. Well, like, I kind of started in high school. Like, yeah. Uh, like, very, very, like, very trying it out. You know, like, through high school, like, believe it or not, so I, I rolled with the police. Like, I was, I was, I was on the fast track to becoming a cop back in Vallejo, California. Mm -hmm. Fast track. Like, 
And then at 18, <coughs> just about 18, I found a weed and said, nah, maybe I don't want to become a cop. <laughs> you know? Um, but then I started smoking it, and it always just felt, made me feel good on the inside. Not that I felt bad, but it just made me feel really, really good. It made you know? feel better. It made me feel yeah. better, exactly. Like everything was just, you know, like the blues were brighter blue, and, and, and food tasted better, and, you know, music sounded better. And like I just, I like to live my life in, 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 in a very, uh, uh, a sensory way, I guess you could say, Be, being yeah. a tourist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Open-minded yeah. beauty, yeah. all that stuff. I can relate to that. Tourists is Yeah, tourists too. They do. Right on, right on. Three tourists is in here. No, you guys are cool. I like tourists. But, you know, with the kids, you know, moving forward, going off and on medicating, my wife really not really caring for it earlier in our relationship. Um, I was, I struggled with cannabis and finally I ended up working in the industry where it changed my mind completely towards cannabis as, as a medicine, mm -hmm. as Change your st the stereotypes, the stereotypes right? completely. Yeah. Well, growing up in California back in 1996, that's when they had legalized it for medicinal purposes. Okay. <coughs> and so I thought people were just looking for a, a reason, reason to get high legally, yeah, you know, or a way to get high legally. Well, exactly. A lot of people right. did so, today still think like that same way. Exactly. exactly. And a lot of people used it as that at first. At first. And then you run into a person like me who runs, who works in one of these places. Yeah. And I get you starting to think about it medicinally. Yeah. You know, like it happened with me. Uh, so I, I used to think it was just a way for people to get high legally. And then I get put into the industry. I work on a door for one of the local companies. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing these guys talk about these effects and these effects and these. I'm like, nah. He's like, watch this person. Watch him. Exactly. Ask him that door. Yep. Ask him. Mm -hmm. Ask him. Look at him today mm -hmm. and watch that patient three months from now. Exactly. Yep. And so I started watching and I started paying attention. And that's how you, even you and I met. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but as a parent, it makes it easier for me to, because I've always been a very open parent. Yeah. I've told my kids, if you have any questions regarding anything at any time, always ask me. Exactly. Especially don't the things. Be, don't be afraid to. Exactly. Especially the things that I do. Mm -hmm. You know? Once I got my card, it made it a little bit easier to describe it to them as medicine. Yes. Yeah. Um, previously, it wasn't really looked at in my house as medicine. Well, it was kind of looked at as medicine, but not really. You know, and then well, once I got the, once, I think they, they wanted to exactly. see that, like, you didn't go to the doctor for well, that. Even, well, even being there now, like, and, and meeting your family mm -hmm. and seeing how open and accepting they are to right. it, and they're very well educated on it too. They Absolutely. They're very well educated on it. So they don't look at it as like, oh, they're just doing goofy high. Right. No, they look at it as like, man, they're feeling better. Right. They're feeling better. Exactly. They're feeling better. It's been stressful. They're melting away that and they're not hurting themselves. And then, yeah, or anybody while else. While doing it. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. So and it's not like how alcohol leads you on a destructive right. path. Exactly. You know? Exactly. They've seen their dad, you know, using alcohol in bad ways. Exactly. You know, and, and they will never see him do that again. And I've seen this. I know my kids have seen that with me. They've seen it. I know they've seen it with you. My kids have seen me drinking and smoking it. Like, yeah. they've seen me smoking they, it. All day long. Yeah. Yeah. All day long. Yes. Well, all even day long. just like you said, it's medicine, the, the time of the month, or for pain, or mm -hmm. it's gotten me off of. I used to be on like a six or eight hundred ibuprofen every day. I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Jack, completely jack. Oh, without a doubt. Any yeah. idol. I mean, if it's really bad, I will. But I go to this first. I'm like, yeah, she I'm she does an like edible and stuff yeah. like that. My liver got bad from taking pharmaceutical mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Even over the counter. Mm -hmm. like my my brain got screwed up from taking psych meds and pain too. meds. Yeah, my my receptors are a lot different. I respond a lot differently to things. <laughs> Which makes me want to come into the, the part of this topic is um, telling your kids the truth about medical cannabis. Like that's for me is something that has really popped up lately. And you know, I know I do these videos, and I know that a lot of people see it, and I know that there's chances of my children seeing it. And the thing is, is that you know, what? yes, I do educate my children when it comes to medical cannabis. Why? Because when I was growing up, I was taught complete opposite about cannabis that it would ruin your life as compared to heroin. That, and I, like people will tell you, that's like comparing heroin and apples. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Yeah, it really is. And, and the thing is that I was raised by an old school Vietnam veteran, and he was very against it. And his thing was that it would ruin your life and lead you down the path of nowhere. 
And so I tried it and it made me feel better. And I actually performed better, listened better, paid attention better, you know, focused yes, better. Yeah, focused. And I felt more motivated. And so I was like, well, if they're lying to me about this, what else are they lying to me about? You know, so it makes you want to try other things. So with my kids, I don't want to lie to them about cannabis. My children ask me about it all the time. Like I have a six, uh, 17 year old, she'll be 17. I have a son who's uh, just turned eight. And they are very curious about it, and I do take them to festivals and things like that, so they can be educated. Mm -hmm. Because I want them to know when they get older. If you're in school and you see somebody handing you something like this, know what it is. For one, know what it is. That exactly. Was, that went uh, around what, past year or this past. This six past years with the big, well, this past the couple of years with yeah. vapes, with edibles, or kids getting them at school, them at things school. like that. Yeah, yeah. I did ask you know, them like so. Which one of your friends you have to educate your children on what this stuff is, what it can do for you, what it can do to you, and when it's right to do, when it's right to do it. Well, I, I was a child who did cannabis, technically. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it does help <laughs> focus, yeah, uh, focus, did school better, didn't worry about things that were going on at home. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, it is hard. We expect a lot from them and for us, from ourselves, and it, it's a good way to kind of. Yeah, get you, get you and you know, a lot of folks they 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 call some of these inabilities to focus and things like that, like ADHD. Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, ADHD. Exactly. ADHD. Exactly. And they say that cannabis is very very good when used properly for both of those. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be careful though when using for ADHD because uh, things Strains. can be opposite. Yeah, things exactly. Because you can take a sativa and act like an indica, you can take an indica and act like a sativa. Exactly. Like I do have opposite effects. If mm -hmm. I smoke a sativa, uh -huh. I will crash. I will crash CBD out. sometimes can cause mania mm -hmm. in people with ADHD. Oh, I think it's good to know. Yeah. 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 Well, because this is good to know because I have a daughter who has been convinced when she was a child that she has ADD and ADHD. They've convinced her. So she believes what she's been told all from these school labels, and all these doctors. All and these you know, Yeah, so she's like, oh, I got ADD. That's not your excuse. That's yeah. not your excuse. And a lot of children use that as their excuse. Well, if you have ADD so bad, I don't want you on Ritalin. There's minerals, because, there's vitamins, yeah. there's, there's other, 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 other supplies options. that can be used. They can focus because they're all on phones. Like, yeah, they can focus. Yeah. Yeah. They can look at that thing on the phone. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but it's that's what I'm telling you. I have a daughter that so like, over the years, <laughs> yeah. they yeah. that she yeah. has ADD. Yeah. She's been, they've been, they've convinced her that she needs this Ritalin. She even told me, Dad, I took my Ritalin. I haven't ate nothing. I got the jitters. Like and it's like, eat. okay, yeah, that's you, not okay. Yeah, you need to don't eat. have an appetite because okay. it blocks yeah, and it, it messes with all those receptors. All those so. chemicals that you're putting in the foreign yeah. chemicals. This yeah. is chemical, but it's just, this is an organic yeah. chemical also that, have that, that your body actually accepts yeah. readily through the endocannabinoid receptors. Exactly, because exactly. you already have that. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. exactly. And so it, it, it's trying to get, it's telling your kids about medical cannabis. You got to tell, them, tell them the truth about it, educate them about it. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Something you probably wish you probably yeah. would have done a long time ago. Yeah, well, my my older kids reached out and they found out mm -hmm. I smoked and they thought it was the end of the world because they thought it was yeah, a bad thing. Yeah, they thought I was smoking crack or something. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Well, like they did. It used to be in the Dare program. Yeah. There's not a Dare program anymore, but right. now they do teach about other things in school. Kids came home with this information on like meth and and like heroin and other stuff, which is fine. But I'm like, why don't you do something positive like with this? There is a school her oldest son goes to. Oh, cool. And I remember when he first started there, they had a pamphlet uh, on freshmen, medical cannabis. Yeah, freshmen had a, like a welcome day. They had a lot of information on things. He did bring home a hemp growing pamphlet. That's and good. I thought that was really That's cool. Good. Well, that that was awesome. Gardening <laughs> and lots of other stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, there's something finally. So. Yeah, uh, why not teach them early? Yeah, there's a lot. They can learn to grow. They can learn about the plant. It's got chemical compounds. Um, I'm all for it. I think it has a good future. I completely agree. Basically, the thing is, is that it's been stigmatized yes. exactly. in a way that makes us believe or made us believe yeah. that it was a bad thing for, for people to use. Yeah. For, forever and ever and ever and I ever. I still got shout out to Harry Anslinger. <laughs> and and, and tell that motherfucker came yeah, across it. Exactly. Yeah. Man. Yeah. One hundred year prohibition is ridiculous. Exactly. Man. Until he came across it, it w there was never a stigma against it. It was a food product. It became a political yeah. thing. Exactly. And which even today, I feel like there's a 
A lot of these laws are being made to piggyback on patients. Thank you. And I, I can drive you from your notes. Anybody? <laughs> I'm good for that. Okay. Um, so I know you tell your children the truth about medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. I know you tell your children the truth. I know it's something that you yeah. definitely yeah. need to know. <laughs> now it's... And I mean, well, I want to ask you too, even for your younger child, do you, is CBD or anything like that something you consider for, for your younger child? I do give her CBD at times. I haven't given it to her regularly, so I'm just getting back to work now because mm -hmm. with her having Down syndrome, I basically took off for work because I didn't trust anyone. I mean, she can't communicate to me if anyone's hurting her. Yeah. In this crazy world we live in, yeah. and like, no. So and made a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. How does it work for her? The CBD. It helps calm her down whenever she's acting a little hyper. I'm curious once I start giving it to her regular, mm -hmm. if it's going to help her with any of her speech, because I understand it does help some kids with autism. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it, 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 does, so, it has certain neurotypical <coughs> things for, for the brain mm -hmm. um, that can actually help <coughs> things to awaken and help things to like stay a little bit more mellow if necessary. So there's all sorts of things that CBD does to the brain that THC doesn't do. So it's yes. amazing that you're Oh, you still yeah. get that, like with CBD, like, oh, I, I don't want CBD, I, I can't take it, I'll take a drug test, or, oh, I don't want to get high, I'm like, you're not going to get high on CBD. And you're not um, going to come so, up Yeah, we have, like, these <laughs> CBD products, funny. but they don't have one for kids yet, and I'm waiting, like, that it's, it's like, like, right into the next topic. I thought, yeah, yeah. Candies yeah. for Miss Teddy topic. for her, um, when we took a they trip. They do have them, so. and I do like them for kids, but I still find, like, some parents won't give them to their kids unless it says, like, Kids. My yeah. father just freaked out because <coughs> on our trip I took him, so she'd stay with me. We drove to the to Pittsburgh, yeah. Look. So I gave him to her on the trip, so she could stay so chill in the car seat. Yeah. And my dad was like, "You're kidding." Me. A good way to, good way to, to tell people yeah. if if it doesn't say four kids on it, explain to people that the human body naturally has this in it. Naturally. And all you're doing is enhancing it. Naturally, all you're doing is enhancing it. With It has sugar in it. That's the thing. But you give your kids sugar in virtually everything yeah, else anyway. Yeah. The morning they're cereal, the, blood, the, the you lunch that they eat, the lunch of bulls. You can give your kids fast food like the McDonald's and Burger King. You know, but you don't want to give them CBD. Yeah, nastiness like that. You are the problem. Poison, you are a part of the problem. So that led into the next topic too, which was cannabis and CBD for children, which we just fell right into that. So, I mean... We, we, but, yeah, we discussed how it helps with well, kids with ADD, with physical limitations, mm -hmm. yeah, kids with behavioral. I want it to be eventually offered like as as easy as they pass out Ritalin, like, oh, why don't you try this first? It's right. a natural supplement. Right. And then if that doesn't work, okay, go with medication. Well, I know we were giving out CBD no samples middle. at the Comic-Con, and we just, we can't, we had, we can't even to really, you know, under the age of 18. That was obviously under the age of 18, right. you know, so like yeah, a 12 year old kid would be like, can I have some CBD? No nah, man, sorry, I can't give you CBD. Right. So that's kind of good kept in mind too. <laughs> that, but that's at a big, huge like vending event. That's something completely different. But personally, and, like, but personally, if a parent like, decided yeah. to pick that edible up and decided to take it home and give it to the child, that's completely different. It's a vitamin. Yeah. It's like what is this? Do you melatonin now and chamomile and exactly. yeah, yeah, so, so, so many natural like, remedies. Like, no why so many natural homeopathic remedies that it's yeah. CBD has to be a part of the right? Yeah, they can go in and get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they can go in and get anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. The pharmacy, I mean, you you don't want to give your kids. Literally, you don't want to give your kids Tylenol or ibuprofen or Sorry, or, or aspirin. They're still growing. You know exactly. Yeah. These are these are foreign chemicals that you're introducing into your child's stomach. Which but but you know because the FDA says it's okay. And which is funny. Don't you mentioned. Don't <laughs> It's, it's yeah. funny you mentioned because at 10 years old, I had bleeding stomach ulcers. Mm. And they said a lot of this caused because of the, the drama I was going through at the time. And uh, But they stuck me on a bunch of medications too because of my physical pains that they couldn't explain because they didn't know what my disease was at that time. But yeah, at 10 years old, I'm being put on Prilosex and Prozac and freaking um, Tylenols and Ibuprofen. And, I wonder it's my like they don't even up. want to figure out what's wrong with you. No, they just said, just Well, that's because what I've learned too, and Chris Rock says it, and I love Chris Rock, money is not in the cure, it's in the medicine. In the medicine. Yeah. So the more the demand for the medicine, the more you money here. they're going to get. Keeping you here. That's why they're going to take another side effects, they just want to take other medications. And it goes back all to the same people. 
they go back all to the oh, same circle. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, but it's the same people who are feeding you the nonsense that are also feeding you the stuff that's supposed to make you feel better. Yes. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 we're going to get you sick. Well, here's what's, here's exactly. what's kind of making me mad now, is those same people, now that their pharmaceuticals are being blackballed for, for cannabis, mm -hmm. now they want to piggyback cannabis patients. Uh -huh. Exactly. And that, that's, that's where legalization is going to give us a, a, a terrible ride. Mm -hmm. we, I tell people all the time, mm -hmm. we don't want legalization. We want decriminalization. Exactly. We don't want legal, legalization brings regulation, and regulation brings big Taxation. business. Taxation. 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 And big business. And big business, and big business big, gets the revenue. And so what they're going to do is they're going to tax it super high mm -hmm. until big business comes in and swoops it all up, and then they're going to drop the taxes on yeah. And so then you know how that's gonna make it hard for parents, right? Because then we got uh, we got to take care, of, pay for our medication. We got to try to take care of our children. And you guys are still gonna be giving us a stigma that well, why you should have your insurance paying for you to go to the pharmacy to get your medication. Right. But why don't, if you want to tax my cannabis, why doesn't my insurance cover my cannabis then? You know. Yeah. There you I mean, go. unless why is unless there a cap then on dollar amount and say okay, well I just this as medication a, as a yeah. parent. Unless my tax dollars that I'm paying for my cannabis goes to the schools. Exactly. Goes to children's programs. Especially in New Mexico. I mean, do you know how many after school programs are going defunct no. every yeah. fucking week? You, you know what? I hear, we hear, we They're going know, to charter, yeah. Everything's going to charter There's schools, and these do. charter schools yeah. have no outlet for these children. Thank you. There's they no sports. There's, there's no ROTC programs. Thank you. There's no cheer programs. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing. And so these kids are they're connected, constantly connected to either a computer at school, a cell phone in their hand, a video game at home, and they're never disconnecting. And so they're, they're being misinformed about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And with education in New Mexico, if you want to tax my cannabis, then I want to see my education go from 50th in the nation to being mm -hmm. in the top, top three. You best be in the top three in Mexico because right now children have never been a priority to you. And but to us as patients, my children have always been a priority to me, regardless if I use cannabis or your bullshit prescriptions. Her children have always been a priority to her. We wouldn't have gotten married if her children weren't her priority because you would have told me to kick rocks if I told her to choose me over her kids. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing with with Angela. Same exactly. Kids are my number one. All kids right. are number one. And their health. Right. And our kids health are number one. Our health and our health is number one. Health is number one. Our, our, kids our, are number our quality one. of lifestyle, our Thank pursuit you. of happiness, which we're all promised to have, Thank is number one. How come you're not making it number one? Thank so we make our kids number one. We expect staying in New Mexico. If we're going to tax our shit, I want to see education be number one. Thank you. At least get us out of the top, the bottom ten. Yes. Give us yes. For now. For now, get us out of the bottom ten. I mean, we'll just, take baby steps. <laughs> yeah, just go that in the right is direction. Stop going back. That that is just as harmful mm -hmm. to children as feeding them bad shit. Exactly. Yeah. You're getting them because you're feeding their mind, you're feeding their spirit, you're feeding their body. Thank you. And if you want to grow a healthy, productive, and yeah, a, a good, respectable human being, adult, then. Just stop feeding them bullshit. Thank stop you. feeding them poison. Thank you. You know, and start telling them the truth. Thank you. Yes, let kids stop feeding their need, mind poison. Yeah, let kids you know? that need medication well, get medicated and get you. their education. I don't thank know if you. you all ever really have you. any yeah. brick. The, the good thing about he the human body. He can't get his education because he can't. Because he can't medicate. Because yeah. he needs to medicate. The good thing about the human body is yes. when you put the right things in it, mm -hmm. cannabis included, it responds perfectly. And it makes you better immediately. Yes. Like, I mean, it starts working right towards your, your benefit. All these other pills that people take or, 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 or give their children or, you know, the, the, the little, the drinks it's and part, all of it. It's part of the programming. Thank you. It's part of the Thank programming. You. And we have to undo the programming. We have to program. unplug, from the, unplug from the matrix. Yep. You know, and, 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 and see it for what it actually is. And, and the thing about cannabis, and that's why a lot of people, because you haven't disconnected, mm -hmm. cannabis is connected to this earth. So it be. So we're all made for the same cup. First, like that's. I just want to like eventually see it be offered. Like first, it first. should be like it should yeah, be number one option. Oh, you like, want to try like, cannabis like, before Medicaid you try this? Program, no, right? when I go to the doctor. Yeah. I tell them something first, and he's well. Let's get you on a pill. Oh man, that's your first response to everything. Dude. Okay. Can't you just tell me? Well, how can we help you get your cannabis? You know, yeah, I take my kids to the to their doctors. I do. Mm -hmm. However, my doctors always tell me. 
oh, your kids are this, your kids are that. We need to do this, we need to do that. No, 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 no. Trust me when I tell you, miss or mister. No. But my kids are fine. They're like I know me. what's best for them. I know what's best for them. Look at me. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a mess. My pops used to tell me all the time, if you're not dying on the ground, your ass is going to school, your ass don't need to go to a doctor. Thank you. And, and, I, and look at me, I don't go to a doctor. Yeah. Very rarely do I ever go and be and seen. The times I went to the doctor, guess what? My ass was dying on the ground. Thank you. Oh, you're <laughs> sick right now. Yeah, I was dying on the ground every time. But, I mean, I really feel like this has been a, a very great topic for us to cover, and I I really want it to get viewed because I really want the state in it. I want, I want our governor to see the shit. You know, I'm cool with my governor, you know, with the cannabis part of all this stuff. There's a lot of stuff I'm not cool with. A lot of people I don't care and like me or may not agree with me. But one thing that, number one, I know a lot of citizens, a lot of people in Mexico agree with me is make education number one. You already have about two, three generations of dumbasses running around on these streets. Make education number one, because we need to change that. Change the stigmas, change the stereotypes. Change, change, because you keep doing what we've been doing all this time and ain't nothing changing. So it's time that we make a change because this shit is just not old. And it's, yeah, and all of us as Americans and Albuquerque citizens out here, and we live on these streets and we see it in the news every day, if we can change our education so our children, when they grow up, they continue to make that change. If not, we're just going to stay in this funk. Right. So we're going to change the future. You know, and yeah. I think that's one of the things as well why cannabis was made illegal is because it helps people to think towards change. Well, and make you know, you know, it helps it you to you find your own. Yeah, exactly. It makes you think think as an independent instead of sitting mind. there and following yeah. along like everyone else. I mean, yeah. I've been on, I've been on those opiates and psych meds, and you know what it does to you? It it, it, so it just you yeah, it just drop. You're just you're not productive. Right. You're not productive. Right. You don't even think. Thank the you. only thing you can think about is when you need you know, some more. You know, you know, yeah. Cannabis led me to Bob Marley, who said, "Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourself can free our minds." Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like in that 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 quote, I live by. And ever since then, Love like Bob seriously, Bob. like it really like. And it's like oh. Like, and, and yeah. yesterday is Martin Luther King Day. And yes. one of his famous quotes from me that I absolutely love is that you cannot change hate with hate. Thank you. That's not going to happen. You're just going to fall apart. You're just going to downfall. Thank you. You know, you have to change it with love. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. Love and education. Mm -hmm. You have to nature it. And, uh, I mean, if there's anything else you guys want to throw in here at the end, I mean, I think we covered a great topic today. Mm -hmm. I think, like, I heard along one of these sessions that there are some programs that can help kids even though special needs or not get medicine i'm just not sure where so if there is anybody that knows we, yeah let us know yeah. um if there is a way because i know that oils, you know, i know that a lot of people come here for refuge a lot of people come to our state for refuge for the medical cannabis mm -hmm. if there's a way for you know if there's somewhere you can go to help get if you want to get your child onto medical cannabis but whatever you know, gonna where, do you know any places where people or how that actually works on how and someone under age of 18. so you have to like there are specific doctors who will help people under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on what their particular conditions are or the particular types of doctors you want to speak to but talk to your doctor and if your doctor can't help you call your local cannabis dispensary and see if they can lead you towards someone. Definitely so. Anything else you want to share, Angela? Just a simple stop the stigma. Yeah, stop the stigma. Stop the stereotypes. Stop the kids and get them off pharmaceuticals for sure. They don't need it. Anything we we, we can medicate and take care of our children. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, we can we function better. Keep yourself protected, especially parents. If you're going to be using cannabis, make sure you get your card. Especially in the states where cannabis is only medically legal, yes. or make sure that you stay within the parameters of your state laws. Yes, as much as you possibly can. I, I say uh, get your card and keep CYFD off your back. Exactly. And, yeah. don't, don't worry else. about it. You can exactly. walk around smelling like cannabis and feel comfortable. Oh, you have that skunk fiber with you. Yeah. I mean, like you said, CYFD. We invested in ourselves a skunk bag, which is a backpack that locks. And it's syllable, can be spelled. So Natasha and I locked this up within a locked up room. 
So that way, it's safe and secure for, want. If they for our children. Come over there we go. Anything worse yeah. will happen, and they say, where do you keep your medicine? You That's all that CYFD wants to see is that you have it locked up, safe and secure, away from your children, just the like your fire arms. Anything else, the same like you would with like opiates. Yeah, you're supposed to lock up your prescription so pills for those of you who keep them in your cabinets in your kitchen table. tables, kitchen tables, kitchen tables or your cabinets in your kitchen. Yeah, for those of you who keep your pills out there for your kids to open up. Just leave them locked. Lock everything up. Be responsible. Accidental overdose is scary. And that's but you can, you can never overdose on cannabis. No. No. no, no but you can freak the kid out if they've never done it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So lock your shit up. Lock your shit up. Can't overdose on Rice Krispies after some cannabis. Oh, man. I, I say this has been a great topic. It. This is pretty much it for, for our fancy topic today. Matthew, my real life TV 505. PIC Natasha, special guest Angela, and my good friend over here, info.thc, we got Stu. Yeah. So we appreciate you guys, yeah, you. and uh, yeah, we'll look forward to the future. Thank you. All right.